Hello guys, this is Lewis, and I thought I'd bring you another video on the Scale Modeling 101 series that I do on my channel. Um, to be honest, I'm a little nervous about doing this video. I was a little nervous about doing this video because I don't consider myself to be an expert on airbrushing. You know, I still got a lot to learn, but I think when it comes to airbrushing, you never stop learning, okay? You always find something new, and, and, and there's people out there on YouTube that do amazing work with their airbrushes, okay? Um, but this video is gonna be about airbrushing on scale models, okay? Styrene scale models. Um, I thought I'd throw that out there because I don't wanna mislead anyone, okay? So I'm gonna give you three tips that I think they're the, for me, they're the fundamentals uh, of airbrushing when it comes to scale modeling, okay? Tip number one is, to airbrush, of course, you're gonna need an airbrush, okay? <laughs> so, my first tip, and this is probably gonna cause a little controversy, but I'm talking about my own experience here. When it comes to getting an airbrush, don't take any shortcuts, okay? Don't go for the cheap ones. Invest your money on your airbrush, on your gun, okay? Find that airbrush that's gonna last you for years, I've had these uh, Iwata for about, I wanna say about six to seven years, okay? And it still works great. Um, I say don't buy the, the, the cheap airbrushes because I pay the price. I bought those cheap Harbor Freight <laughs> airbrushes and it just ruined airbrushing for me because I was getting frustrated, the airbrush didn't do what I wanted it to do. Uh, it wasn't capable of doing it. So all that money that I spent on that, I could have used for a better gun. So invest your money. Don't be afraid of the airbrush, okay? Don't think that just because you bought a, 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 an airbrush that it's for high detail that you have to do high detail. No, it's just buy an airbrush that it's gonna last you for a long time that is that is going to uh, uh, do whatever you need it to do, okay? Watch reviews on YouTube, we have tons of reviews. Uh, don't go and buy an airbrush because you saw one of your favorite modelers, you know, use that airbrush, you know, buy an airbrush because that's the one you like. So I highly recommend Iwata. Iwata is a great, great uh, brand. Not the cheapest brand, but you know you can find good airbrushes for my water in this case we're going to be using the chrome badger chrome okay this is my favorite airbrush this is the type of airbrush that will last you forever won't break your bank and also uh gives you high detail as well as well coverage you know uh i think i believe it has a 0.35 uh, uh no uh, nozzle and needle okay so you could do high detail on these airbrush but this is the type of airbrush that i needed i wish this would have been my first buy but unfortunately it was this was given to me i don't know exactly how much the uh, it is right now um another advice that i give you is to get a mac valve okay the mac valve allows you to control the air pressure up or down uh, without having to go to the compressor and lower it there, uh, it comes really handy. Um, get to know your airbrush. Get get practice on it. I know a lot of people they take the handle off to find that really nice balance. I keep it on because I have really big hands, and and I just love this airbrush. Okay, so find the airbrush that is gonna work for you. And believe me, if you do research, you will find that airbrush is not gonna break your bank and, and you're gonna have it for a long time, okay? My second advice is ask yourself, what kind of paints am I gonna be using the most? Is it gonna be acrylics? Is it gonna be lacquers? Is it gonna be enamels, okay? I spray indoors in my house, so I use acrylics. Um, in this case, we're going to be using model air range. Uh, this is supposed to be uh, ready for airbrushing. I say supposed to be 
because sometimes you still have to thin it. But once you know what kind of paint you use, learn how to thin it, okay? The golden rule for thinning paint is 2% melt uh, consistency, okay? Um, another tip that I give you when it comes to airbrushing, especially if you live in like very warm places, is to get flow improver and stick to the same brand. Um, if you're gonna use Vallejo paints, use their thinners. Uh, I'm not saying you have to, because you could use uh, you know, different thinners for different paints, but they're designed for that kind of range. So it, it saves you a lot of headaches. Um, you know, I know a lot of modelers, they use alcohol to thin their thinners. They use lacquers to thin their thin, uh, paints. Um, you know, I just try to stick to the same brand because I find it a lot easier, but Flow Improver, um, I use their Vallejo one. Uh, for Vallejo paints and I also have the Equitex that I use for different kinds of paints. So get to know your paints, ask yourself what kind of paints you're going to be using and practice on thinning your paint, okay? And my advice is thin your paints in a different container, okay? Once you get to know how to thin your paint, then you could do it in your airbrush. And um, it's 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 not that hard guys it's just a matter of getting used to it okay like everything else practice is perfect which brings me to my third and final tip practice 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 makes perfect uh now i learned from a from a modeler named jim weschler um i would highly recommend it if you get like a pain meal well, a paint mule, what I mean is an old model that you don't care about and you practice painting on it. Because I see a lot of videos where they take an airbrush and they're practicing on paper and they see, oh, you know, that's nice detail. Look how thin my lines are. But then when, when they get to the plastic, it's a total different game. Whereas if you just get a piece of styrene like this and you start practicing on this and so you guys can see I'm still I'm still learning I'm still practicing um, you'll get used to uh, the distance you'll get used to the the how thin your paint is and and believe me this helps a lot you know practicing on a model helps a lot because especially if you're using enamels or lacquers you know if you mess up they're gonna be a lot harder to correct than if you were using acrylics that's another reason why I use acrylics uh, so those are my three tips you know get to know your your airbrush once you get it um, practice on how to thin your your paint and practice on the material that you're gonna be painting in you know uh, if it's plastic practice on plastics if it's paper practice on paper or canvas whatever but those are my three tips uh that i give you now um those three things really really help me with airbrushing okay and don't be afraid of airbrushing you know a lot of people are very very intimidated when they see an airbrush and it's just another tool it's another tool in your toolbox that you use for your modeling and once you get it down believe me it could be fun okay but um what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do a little clip we're gonna be uh like i said using this kind of paints we're gonna be painting the the white the insignia white on this hellcat this is a 170 second scale model and i just want you guys to see me airbrush you know and and see how close i get uh, the golden rule for me when it comes to paint, and it's very logical, is if the thicker the paint, the more airbrush you're gonna, I mean the more airbrush, the more pressure you're gonna utilize, okay? If your paint is thinner, then you don't need that much um, pressure because then you get something, oh, I actually cover, well, you kind of see it on the tip, you, you're gonna get that, that spider leg effect you know where your paint is so thin that it just goes everywhere on your on your plastic um, 
that's the golden rule that I go by and believe me it's 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 a logical rule but it helped me a lot you know um, as you guys can see I've been I've been painting wheels and and fuel tanks and whatnot and yeah I just thought you know maybe you could get something out of this video I hope that's that's the whole purpose of me making videos is that you guys get something out of it so let me show you guys how I airbrush notice the distance that I'm airbrushing in and um, I'll put notes on what kind of pressure I'm using and all that stuff okay all right let's get to painting okay guys so I decided to use my mic instead of having you guys to read a bunch of text I don't want to uh, have you guys read everything but here I'm starting with my model uh, I'm I'm still in the thick side of things when it comes to my paint. Uh, that's what I was telling about, you know, Vallejo model air. The the paint sometimes they still need to be thin a little bit. Uh, so I'm not really happy with how thin my paint is. As you guys can see here, I'm just gonna put my model down and 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 um, rethin my paint. And now you guys could see I'm a lot more comfortable with my with my airbrush with my paint and so I'm starting on this wing and uh, when I paint a model I like to think ahead with my weathering and so I'm going back and forth uh, on the panels and hitting the center of the panels when you're working with pre-shading um, that's what you do you you cover in thin layers and once you see that pre-shading disappear you move to a different part of the model and you're gonna see that pre-shading come up again and show through and then whether or not you want it to you know to look like that you could either just move away from it or go up back and do another thin layer and build it up as, as much as you want so um, here on the other wing, I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable with the paint and I'm being a little more aggressive. Um, if you notice on the opposite wing, you see that pre-shading to start to come up. Now, um, distance-wise, my distance between the, uh, the airbrush and the model is about two to three inches. Uh, this type of airbrush allows me to do details without having to get too close to the to the model but if you wish to get close to the model my recommendation will be to lower your pressure because your paint is a lot thinner so here I am just going back and forth you know just playing with the pre-shading uh, playing with the panels trying to break it up when you're working with solid colors that's what you want to do and I'm gonna be working later on the uh, the horizontal uh, stabilizers or the tail of the of the plane here it is I'm gonna give you guys a little close-up and yeah just so you guys could get an idea of how close I am to the to the model I'm gonna go back to the center of the panels thinking about the weathering and all that stuff and yeah guys it's, it's it's not as hard believe me if i could do it you can do it and it's it's fun it's it's something that you could practice on and get better and better and better here i am just giving it a overall coat okay so yeah that's all okay guys so here we are we're we're done um this is a little patchy that's part of the weathering that i'm doing but if you guys saw me i kept going back and forth you know i kept building up my layers i went in there and hit some of the panels and stuff just break it up a little when you're working with a solid color and here's a good example um you could either make it look like this, okay? This is the extra fuel tank. It looks all white. Or you could break it up and go back in the middle of the panels and play with your pre-shading and stuff. Like I said before, practice makes perfect, okay? Practice, 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 practice. Just take an old model, 
Okay, like this. And play with it, you know? Just play with it and um, you'll, you'll, you'll get the hang of it. Don't, don't worry. Practice makes perfect. I don't know how many times I've already said that, but I can't push that enough. And um, yeah, I hope that you guys uh, yeah, get something out of it, you know? Uh, because that's the whole point of me making videos. So my name is Lewis, as always. I'll catch you guys on my next video. Bye-bye.